Hello my nerd musician friend, in this video I'm gonna tell you about the biggest MIDI controller fail I had in my life. In this video I'm gonna talk about how this MIDI controller that was supposed to be the biggest and one of the nicest MIDI controllers I ever built became a living nightmare. So stay tuned to know how I built my biggest yet failed MIDI controller yet. Hi and welcome to The Nerd Musician, my name is Gustavo Silveira and in this channel we talk about things like how to build MIDI controllers and usually I post some nice projects and the code and things so you can build one yourself. But in this video I'm gonna show you something different which is how to not build a MIDI controller in a way that you're going to regret deeply. So you can actually learn with my mistakes so we don't waste that much time and money like just I did with this MIDI controller here. Okay, but first things first, why I decided to build this MIDI controller? This is a custom project made for a client, or let's say almost made. I used to do more MIDI controllers for other people, but I stopped doing for a reason. But after some years and after coming back to Brazil in the beginning of this year, I got the email from this guy with this project where he wanted me to make. And after some thoughts I decided, well, maybe I should do it, it's a rather big project and maybe it's going to be really, really nice. But I had a problem from the start. I just came back from the USA where everything is available, everything is cheap, you can find all sorts of things with quality for low price and fast. But now I am in Brazil where everything is expensive, it's really hard to get good quality things and you don't have that many variety of components as you can find in the USA for example. And also China takes about two months to arrive here in my home. But let's talk about what he actually wanted. So basically there are potentiometers, on off switches, buttons, two different types of buttons but it could be any type of button, a small button, and LEDs. So we have those, this section here, which are the potentiometers and on-off switches. Then we have this module here, which should be for triggering drums, I guess. Some other things for triggering samples, drums, and this part here for actually changing the MIDI channel of the controller, plus some other controls. So that's a fairly big project. So I tried to do it in a way that was not going to take me so much time and that was not going to be so expensive for the client. But I have never done something with that many buttons and LEDs. And most of the buttons I use are usually arcade buttons. So we talked a little bit and we chose tactile buttons for the controller, which are those tiny ones here. So I thought that just using tactile buttons, I could just snap them in those universal PCBs, solder the wires, blah, 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 and everything would just work fine. Same with the LEDs. But I was completely wrong, and that was a terrible mistake, and I wanted to kill myself for a couple times while building this controller. So what about we see the actual process of me building this thing because I recorded everything wanting to build this amazing MIDI controller to show to you. So I actually have the footage of me building it. So while we watch it together, I'm going to comment on each part what I did and what I should have done and what I shouldn't. And I hope you learn with my mistakes and you don't have to spend that much time and money. So shall we? Okay, so the first problem, my first mistake, was the type of PCB I chose to build my circuit or to build the modules where the tactile buttons and LEDs would be. So I proceeded with connecting the tactile buttons, they are 12 by 12 millimeters, I guess. So another problem of this PCB is that it doesn't fit perfectly eight buttons on top and down. So actually one leg of the one, one tactile button is going to be off. So one leg will have to be off the PCB. So I have to just solder outside the PCB with the wire. So I already had some future problems in mind. As you can see, then I finished 
connecting all the tactile buttons and you can see that one of them or actually two of them just stay out of the the normal hole so i have to stick the legs out of the pcb now it was time to start soldering so no big deal here just soldering the legs should just work fine with all the buttons in place i started to put the leds and I carefully planned so I could have common grounds between buttons and the LED legs. Then I used a solid copper wire in the center so I could use a common ground for everything and that in my mind was just me saving time, you know, using a PCB where I can just connect everything and use a common ground because the ground is actually what uh, you spend most of your time soldering if you are using wires. So in my mind, thinking that I was super smart, I chose this PCB so I could have everything in one place with a common ground. This way I was going to save a lot of time. And I think now is where the nightmare starts to begin, is where I start to put all the wires. And I also have to carefully plan where the wires will go and as you can see there's not so much room for soldering a bunch of things together in this type of pcb so it's easy to get shorts and actually solder one thing with the other and when this starts to happen well that's when the headache begins and that's just one module and there will be three of them and for each one i will have a multiplexer as you can see now, I am connecting this multiplexer that has a breakout board, which is great because then I don't need to use another uh, low quality PCB, which is the only ones available for me here. And the endless cycle of cutting wires, stripping wires, cutting wires, stripping wires, soldering wires just goes on and on. Just one tiny board there is already the wire nightmare. But let me show you what was actually the biggest problem of this circuit, was the bit shifters. Bit shifters are used to actually, uh, just using three pins of the Arduino, you can connect actually multiple LEDs and each bit shifter can be used for eight LEDs. So for all the LEDs in this project, I think uh, I used maybe six or eight bit shifters and the bit shifters doesn't have a breakout board as the multiplexer so i proceeded to use this type of pcb to put the bit shifters where in the beginning was okay after lots of wires and lots of connections that was my second nightmare the more i connected to the board the harder was to make clean shoulders and the more you have in the board, the harder it gets for you to find the problem when a problem happens. And I didn't build only one board of 16 buttons and 16 LEDs, I built three of them, which gives me 48 buttons and 48 LEDs, plus all the other potentiometers and on-off switches. So you can start to think how nightmare this would be to debug after everything is soldered. Then I proceeded to the potentiometers, which is a part that I am pretty confident with, because I just had built the MIDI mode where you can see the link here, which is pretty similar to that. It's just potentiometers, on-off switches, and multiplexers. So I knew that that was not going to be a big deal. And I was really excited for this project because as you can see the enclosure would look really really nice. And for the common ground and the common 5 volts, I did the same thing as I did for the MIDI mode, which is using solid copper wire for connecting all the potentiometers with themselves. And although that might look a little sketchy, that you might have some shorts, as long as you are really careful for not touching them, you should be totally fine. And of course, I did all the wires for the potentiometers. connected them to the multiplexer, each group of 16 components. Connected my on-off switches and I put the extra buttons, the only thing that was still missing.
and now Nightmare Part 3 began. Since I used those PCBs that don't have mounting holes, I didn't design the mounting holes in the enclosure. I thought that first I would fit everything in the enclosure and drill with the drilling machine and that would just work fine. So now I have these two massive pieces that I should put together and I don't have a really good plan to do it. But now I still need to connect all the multiplexers of the enclosure to the Arduino that's connected outside the enclosure in that PCB. But that was not a big problem, as long as I knew which wire should go where. And for that at least I had a good plan. And before connecting everything, I actually tested all the LEDs and all the buttons separate and they worked. So I was confident that when I put everything together they would just work because testing them separately they were working so why they shouldn't work when they work together. You can see in this first test that all my LEDs are actually working, I'm just testing the LEDs and when I tested the potentiometers they were actually working too. Okay, so now maybe I should try to put everything together. Well, so nightmare part whatever starts again. At first was just really hard to fit everything, mostly because of that missing hole in the PCB which made me have to put the LED kind of bent because it didn't have a hole for the two legs as well as the buttons. But trying a couple times here and there I was able to fit everything in the holes that were already in the enclosure. And as you can see after some time trying I was just able to fit the three modules in the top part of the enclosure. And another thing that I didn't think about was the length, I mean I thought about but not really well, was about the length of the wires. So I didn't have enough length to put the board that was uh, the, where the Arduino was uh, on the part that it should be. The wires were not long enough so I actually couldn't put the Arduino in the place where it should. But then I started to test again and now some LEDs are not working. After some time I figure out that I actually have some cold solder in the board that has the bit shifters. So with some flux, with some solder sucker and redoing some things I was able to fix uh, or maybe I thought that I was able to fix the LEDs. So now with the LEDs fixed I need to figure out a way of actually mounting those boards so I'm going to drill a hole in each corner of those PCBs and just hope for the best. And there you go! I already started bad, after I drilled the first hole I fucked up a wire, so well, that's no big deal, I just had to solder it again. But in my mind I thought that I was just going to do a good job drilling, but that was far from reality. It was really hard to do it even in a way that was actually going to look good in the outer part of the enclosure. Okay guys, so after all of this what I ended up with was this. You can see that the screws are not really well aligned, that I scratched the enclosure and that it just became a big rat's nest. So the problem was that I tried everything individually and everything was working, but as soon as I started to put things together to fit things in place, I started to break things. So I would fix one LED and then a button would break. I would fix the button and then another row of LEDs would break. I would redo the solder, I would fix, but then something else would break and this would go on and on. And I was about to kill myself for the 10th time, luckily I didn't, and I had to decide for giving up. This was the first time I gave up in a project in my life, I guess at least after my adulthood and I think I am really committed with the things I do and I always go until the end but this thing just seemed impossible. That the only way for this to work was actually redoing most of the thing. With the components I chose, those tiny boards and the buttons and having to solder bit shifters straight to those boards were meant to fail. So what are my big takeaways, the lessons I learned and what I think you shouldn't do in your project. So first, if you're working with a client, 
Don't attempt to do something for the first time. Just do what you're completely confident that you know that's gonna go right in the end. Second, do not use those boards, those universal boards in big projects. After we start soldering a lot of things on that, it starts to get messy and things can just go horribly wrong. Besides, they are terrible quality. I thought that they were fine. I haven't used them in a final project, so I thought they were fine, but they're, they're just bad. The other lesson, if you can just buy better components, just buy them. Unfortunately, here in my city, I didn't have access to any better board like that. Maybe I could find them on the internet, maybe I should have done that, but right here, since I wanted to do it fast, I ended up buying the shitty stuff. And that giving up in a project doesn't make you a loser. Or does it? Let me know in the comments. And then sometimes the best thing to do is giving up while it's early, while it didn't spend tons of hours and money in a project. You can just reduce costs, stopping early and redoing the thing. So what now? You know that that was for a client. So I was, I am extremely frustrated with this project because that's not for me. Someone paid me money for me to do that. So I wrote the guy, explained the whole situation and said that I can't, I just can't do it. For me to do it, I have to redo not the whole thing, but a lot of things. And I charged really cheap. That was a big mistake too, because I was not used to the Brazilian market anymore. And it was just too cheap for the amount of work. I thought it was going to be fast and cheap, but in the end it was just so much work, so much work and expensive. But he was super nice and he said, well, oh, maybe if I just give you more money, you can redo. So you need to press that bell and subscribe to this channel to see what comes next. Is this MIDI controller going to become what is supposed to be my biggest MIDI controller yet, a successful project or not? And if you want to get deeper on how to build things the right way, I have the Making Music with Arduino course. Yes, I teach people how to build MIDI controllers. I make mistakes, but uh, I only teach in the course where I don't know what works. And if you like this channel, you know that I have many projects here that are actually really nice. In the course, I teach you how to program about electronics, how to build enclosures how to use as many inputs and outputs you want in the Arduino, and I teach you the right way. Links in the description here below. So let me know in the comments, have you failed in a MIDI controller? Have you ever gave up? Not even a MIDI controller in a project that you decided to build. I would love to hear your stories and maybe I will not feel as depressed um, as I'm feeling now. So I hope you enjoyed this sad story. It was tough. Uh, I felt really bad for a lot of times because of this, but let's see what happens next. So, see you next video.